When you contact these animals, um, do they speak to you? <laughs> I wish. No. Um, as a medium, not even um, our loved ones speak when they come through. Not always. Uh, you may get a sense of a person, a sense of their height, their look, how they lived, how they died. Animals are similar. But, um, you know, you can get a description of, I sense a cat. You know, oh, all of a sudden I see a cat here, a big Siamese cat, something like that. Right. And you'll know it's a Siamese cat because, wow, it's just can, jumped up here. Can, so can you conjure up, you know, sort of the spirits of, of anyone's pets? No. I, the, 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 the difference here, Phil, is that y you have to have a loving connection between a person and the animal or a person and their loved one on the other side. So if somebody said, could I sit down and contact Elvis or JFK, sure. I can't. What about my, my pet? Your pet? Yeah. If, if I was doing a reading for you, yeah, then there's every chance. But you might not just get your pet. I'm not an animal reader. I, I'm a medium, so I will tune into people's loved ones. Quite often they will bring with them a family pet who was part of the family. Have you got any messages from any of our pets? Am I allowed to do that on air? To get oh, well, 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 you I... could say, I mean, you could say, you know, if, if my oh. pet said anything. I wouldn't hear it, but I, I get the sense of, of animals. I mean, I, I can sense... I, I wasn't joking when I said I sensed a big cat jumping up here, but that was all, just the sense of it. Oh, right, OK. I can't tell you anything. I didn't hear anything. Um, and how I would do that would be if I were doing the reading, then I would tune in and say it was someone else in your family that came through, and I would get a sense of what they were saying. The cat's fine now, da 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 da, -da. OK, well, we've got... Um, we've Beforehand, we got, we got some people that wrote in so you could do this, yeah. not doing it on air. Um, Kayleigh says... We're not allowed to do it live, yeah. no, way, in case you which wondered. is why we sort of didn't did this before. So Kelly says, I'm chronically ill and I've been uh, for the last four years. And my cat Dexter kept me going through my illness. Last week I had to have Dexter put down as he suffered with a heart condition. And I've been struggling to come to terms with the loss. I just want to know if Dexter has a message for me. What does Dexter say? Well, um, the, the first thing, if I look at my crazy notes that I took down, <laughs> and that was for Kelly, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah well, Kelly and Dexter. Um, oh my goodness, I've lost Kelly's notes. Oh. Yeah, Should we come back to that one? Maybe a spirit has taken them. The spirits have taken Kayleigh's notes. Do you want to come back? Which one have you got? No, then? I've got them. You've got them. Kayleigh's too. notes here, yeah, because I don't. Once I've done the reading, Holly, it's difficult for me. I mean, I did five of these. Yeah. It's hard to remember all the details. No, no, fair enough. I made little scribbles, if you don't mind. Um, yeah. Uh, as soon as I tuned in uh, to, to Kayleigh's voice on the phone, um, I, I picked up um, the, the image of the cat and I described him as a kind of mixed-coloured cat, but he had a kind of tigery look on his face mm -hmm. and he had lots of white underneath. And So I gave a description of what I thought, thought the cat Before looked Before you like. saw that picture, obviously. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'd been given a description yeah. of who it is and what they've lost. And what does Dex, what did Dexter say? Well, um, the first thing I've got here uh, was that he was with her grandfather. Right. The, the grandfather was there when Dexter died. The grandfather was looking after. So then a message came from the grandfather talking about that um, she was away from home recently, but he was watching over her okay. and um, basically described that she was going into a new relationship or something in her life and that's where she should concentrate oh. and take her mind away from so the So it was the grandfather that gave the information, not Dexter? Not Dexter, but then, then there was an image of Dexter who, who came in and I felt the, the pain the animal was in before, before it passed, but also I felt a condition in its neck and I said this cat could never wear a collar because it had something chronically wrong with its neck, which it did. Oh, right, so it was right. just picking up from directly from the animal's condition, which as a medium you can pick up quite often yeah. how somebody dies or how they're ill. So that was something. And, and really, there was a lot about this cat was only with her for one year mm. um, and it died very kind of suddenly. Oh, so cool. there was a lot of kind of grief there and, and misunderstanding of the grief. Mm -hmm. uh, well, let's, uh, let's uh, uh, mention Karen then. Uh, she said, Merlin was my Scottish deer hound who uh, died at the age of seven about three years ago. I took the decision to put him down straight away after we found out he had bone cancer. I'd like to know if he forgives me for doing Aww. this and has a message for me. Oh, Karen. Yes. Um, uh, the lovely thing was I saw this beautiful big dog and I saw it running and the, the feeling was that whatever the illness was that was wrong with the dog it would have stopped it or impaired its mobility so the message was that she did the right thing because the dog would have there would have been such a, a you know a loss of mobility yeah. um, the other thing was uh, was that uh, she'd recently lost the border collie and the border collie was with 
the, uh, the dog. The two of them were playing together and I described the fields that they actually played on, these flat grounds rather than heaths or hills or moors, but it's totally flat. And this big dog was running and the other one was a barker. She uh, barked, it was a female. And I described both dogs, one was a collie, because she said, was it an English sheepdog? I said, no, it's a collie. And she said, well, she's just but, died. But, uh, did, right, but wow. did Merlin forgive her for, do, for doing Absolutely, that? because th that was the reason that for her, um, her fear was, had she kept the dog alive, there was something wrong with its foot or its mm. leg and they might have had to amputate, which I didn't know. And I said, but well, this dog would have not wanted to lose its mobility. Yeah. So for you to be brave enough and to love it enough to do that and take the responsibility. So there was forgiveness there, if you want to call it that.